this came up. Welcome to 207th Squadron Screaming Channel, bringing you the best in X-Wing that Maine and New Hampshire have to offer. The 207 Squad is a bunch of tabletop and board game players who love all things Star Wars, especially games like X-Wing. I'm your host, Josh Shu, uh, and one of the moderators of our little squad. Tonight, we're kicking off our league-style TTS tournament, Squad Leader. With me is our streaming and data analysis guru, Alex Barbary. Hey, Alex, how are you? Hey, hey, Josh, how's it going? Um, we're it's pretty going pretty well. Uh, I've had a beautiful day going to the botanical gardens here in Maine, uh, so it's been fun. Anything fun for you? Oh well, you know, just uh, soaking up the fall foliage or the, what's left of it before uh, it disappears for this year. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, we're also thrilled to have on our guest host Joel Springle uh, to provide some knowledge and analysis. Joel is the winner of our last tournament, and we're so glad to have him back on. Hey, Joel. Hey there. Thank you for having me here. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, thanks for joining us for this tournament. Um, we're excited to have you back on. Um, I'm less excited because I have the unfortunate pleasure of playing you this week uh, in this tournament. So that's exciting. You flatter me. Thank you. <laughs> uh, uh, so just so everyone knows what it is that we're doing, uh, could you toss out the rules for the squad later? Absolutely. Uh, each week, a player must select a unique pilot or squad leader. Um, the squad leader has to have a greater or equal initiative than the remainder of the ships in the list and must be limited. Um, each remaining ship must be of lower or equal initiative than the squad leader and identical. Moreover, each remaining ship in the squad must contain the same exact upgrades. So pretty much you have a squad leader and then every other ship in the list is exactly identical, built out exactly uh, the way it is. Uh, at from And from week to week, you can change your list, you can keep it the same. We sort of like to sort of let people choose whatever they desire. Uh, so uh, that's the exciting part of this list building, at least for this tournament. Um, so Joel, in your opinion, what would be uh, the pitfalls with list building for a tournament like this? Like, What are some thoughts that have gone through your mind as you've been building these lists? Well, there's been uh, a quality versus quantity thing, and and you're going to see some serious quantity out there today. Uh, you know, do I bring? Oh, something. Uh, the most extreme thing I came up with was probably uh, Django with a couple of I don't even know how to pronounce them, but the I five tri fighters. It's only three ships, but they're all I five or six, so I should be able to ace everybody. But if I do that and you catch me at all, do I get slaughtered by the amount of ships that you have on the board? And then a big thing is, are you bringing good, efficient stuff that you're spamming? Or is what you're bringing a point or two overcosted? Because if you bring three or four of those, then you're six or eight points overcosted. And suddenly things start to matter a lot more. Um, it's going to be real interesting to see who brought the most efficient versus who brought what they're most comfortable with. And since the points change just happened, a lot of what was most efficient no longer is. Like, I wouldn't be bringing Procket Barons to this thing, and two weeks ago, sure, no problem. Absolutely. Uh, m there were so many lists that I had prepared prior to the points change, and it all of a sudden uh, fell apart as a... As a as a, a result of the points change. Um, so I'm actually fascinated to see what people do. Plus we have some neat little, uh, neat little uh, achievement prizes that we've set up uh, for our players. Uh, they can decide how they wanna build their lists and based on the restrictions that they've placed, they can earn prizes based on that. Um, I found those uh, really fascinating. There's a lot of differences in there. Since I had already come up with just in the process of theory crafting, I'd come up with at least one uh, list for every faction. Well, a couple of the prizes are for, you know, changing your list every week. And uh, an easy way to do that is to fly a different faction. And other prizes for not repeating the same faction. So I'm like, oh, well, I guess that's what I'm doing. Absolutely. We also have a neat little prize tonight, which kind of leads us into uh, some of the lists that we're seeing uh, uh, tonight. Uh, one of the prizes is provided by uh, Nick Miller, and he has provided a prize to the player who plays Jad Bean with uh, a swarm. Uh, and basically, he ha the player has to be the first person to win uh, as Jad Bean against a list that is not does not include Jad Bean, and they get some custom uh, poker tokens. Uh, so. 
Uh, that looks like what Ryan C is playing tonight. He's playing Jad being naked. How bold. As well as uh, some uh, uh, Omega Squadron experts uh, completely naked as well, because that is another achievement prize. Uh, that was one of the things that we crafted, which was choose your pain. Uh, you could either show up with your squad leader naked, or you could show up with your uh, swarm naked. And Ryan, being the glutton for punishment that he is, showed up with both naked. Uh, so he's going for those extra charge tokens. Um, on the other side, what do we have Jason Hall playing? What is he playing? Okay, what he's got going on up there is four X-Wings. Uh, three of them, the Blue Squadrons, the I-1s, with BB Astromex and Ion Torpedoes. So they should be pretty darned bouncy and at the same time limiting the bounciness of the other team. And then Poe with Marksmanship, R4, and the Heavy Laser. Uh, and if I'm not mistaken, this is... Ah, this is the Poe who can help anybody, not just himself. Okay. So, uh, those, so a true those, squad leader. The, yeah, and, and the I-1s with the ion torpedoes, hey, they can still get a, a target lock when it's appropriate because Poe can help them do that. Absolutely. And it looks like they're pretty much evenly matched in terms of hull and shields, right? Um, I think uh, Ryan's list right here has 36 uh, hull and shield total, and it looks like Jason's list has 35 total. Um, I think, I think Ryan's got his work cut out for him because obviously Jason's um, list only has 28, 28. So interesting. Uh, but then again, Ryan has no upgrades. He's going to have to deal with a lot of, uh, a lot of deciding whether to spend those hits, uh, if he misses just to hand out strains so that hopefully somebody else hits, I guess. That ability right there really, to me was set up for flying against other people's aces. He shouldn't have too much trouble hitting two agility ships with his two agility with his two red dice. But it could still come in handy if he only rolls one and it's at range three, might as well just apply a strain and not even worry about getting the damage in. Absolutely. I think I think that's the beauty and uh I, I love the fact that he he brought uh, Omega Squadron uh, experts rather than the base level pilot. It gives him a slight advantage over the blue squadron pilots that Jason has brought. I looked at that ahead of time, uh, and the difference in point cost between them and the Zetas is only one point. So he could have saved a grand total of five points and done something like a hull on Jad Bean. I think he probably made the right call by just going for the, the higher initiative skill. Likewise, likewise, especially if you're going to be naked. Uh, it looks like they're all set to go. And so uh, I'm excited to see what happens tonight. Uh, and... Uh, We'll and wait till we go and start. Yeah, let's go ahead and let them go in and start. It looks like they're finalizing the setup, and so we'll see how it uh, so how it pans out. I'm really excited to see all these uh, dial covers, which Ryan incidentally uh, crafted for all of us. Uh, this is our streaming table. Uh, he customized all the tokens on the table that we see, uh, the the damage deck as well as the fun little dial covers that you see here. And it looks like uh, initiative has been rolled, and Ryan will be first player, uh, and there are no overlaps. Yep, it'll be the I-1 uh, Blue Squadron X-Wings going first, and probably trying to see if they can do something to mess up the Omegas, but because they've got the arc front and back, it's a whole lot harder to do that. I wonder how fast uh, Ryan will sort of begin to engage. Uh, obviously, it looks like Jason's trying to pull in a flank with Poe. Uh, it's interesting because does he have the Black One title on on him? I don't believe he does. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see how no. he. I'm maneuvers. expecting the body of of Blues to head off uh, to their right because they're staring down a significantly superior jousting force right now, and that's not a happy. And it looks like all players have been set. Okay. 
I love what you guys have done with all of the div the digital alt arts in here, the moose shields, your token in the screen, the damage decks, all of it. It's uh, very slick. Makes me a little jealous for the local things I used to put on back in the pre-COVID days. Absolutely. Um, we've been hard at work at trying to design a table that would demonstrate our love for Maine, uh, as well as uh, be X-Wing friendly. Um, uh, I'm really proud of the digital assets that are here, but we obviously our players also get uh, physical copies of these. There are the focus tokens, the evade tokens that are physical copies, as well as the charge tokens this time, which uh, everybody should be getting if they uh, participate. So, and you can get extra ones uh, if you want, uh, if you do those crazy achievements. And there he goes, revealing the hard turn off to the side and boosting up stream a little bit. Probably a straight boost here. And I'd bet the same thing from the last one. And a four forward with Omega. Takes a range three bubble. Just to, I assume, to check range. That's what I was figuring too just how far things are away and doing the same huh there's no jamming capacity on the other team so there's no real need to do that but in today's game honestly it's just a good habit to be in absolutely for your first turn maneuver especially with all those whispers i was expecting to see some whispers in this tournament at some point and to see what people would do um because it definitely feels like a jam meta all of a sudden. I was in an Aces High thing Thursday evening at 80 points, and I brought Kylo in the Whisper with a Trick Shot and Shattering Shot just for funsies. And uh -huh. my very first shot of the game, I put five damage into Covenel. It was oh my really goodness. gross. <laughs> yeah. I could imagine how gross it is. It does feel gross. and. And with that sensor scrambler, it just looks, it looks like they can travel so fast, so quickly in one turn. Both the Whispers and the, uh, the FO Bombers, thanks to their ability, they can actually act an awful lot like Strikers, only both of those ships are faster than Strikers. So for you Striker players out there, there's, there's a new flavor in town. Absolutely. I, I do feel like with all the maneuvers that you can really pull off with the Whisper, that it's a, it's a little bit more of a complicated echo, so to speak. I see that mm. a lot with the chatter, uh, is that it, it requires that same kind of thought process as an echo. And so it'll be interesting to see it, how it pans out. You're making it sound horribly complex, which really intrigues me. And now I want to go theory craft. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do believe that there, there, there's some, there's some difficulty with it. Um, and I think you still have to fly well in order to be able to maneuver these, these ships. They, they, they can't just go willy nilly and you do have to line up your shots really carefully. Um, and I think, you know, for me, the green dice is, uh, is a terrible friend. And so <laughs> I always assume that I'm going to do bat poorly with green dice. Uh, and it looks well, like... Well, then you should definitely be flying the decimator and the ghost whenever possible. Uh, uh, so for the last hyperspace tournament that I played, I played actually against uh, Patrick Patrick, who's joining us uh, next week for a tournament. I actually flew a double deci. So mm. for a hyperspace tournament, I think there's the last hyperspace in-person tournament that I did. Uh, it is one of my favorite lists, and uh, sadly, I don't think it works anymore. I I loved Double Ghost back in 1.0, but the 2.0 damage deck is so unforgiving. You're going to eat some crits, and on any given game, you might be fine, but over the span of uh, any couple of games, you're going to get a ship nerfed long before it's dead, and it, it just ends up 
for a six round tournament not being viable, which yeah. is a bummer because I love it. I, I made it. I made it so close to cut. I was so sad. I was one round away from cut, and I lost to Patrick Patrick because I turned the wrong direction, and oh, right. uh, and it was it was that was the end of the game. But I was pretty happy with what I did, considering that I brought a double double desi with little practice. Uh, Jason made a really sweet move here, bringing in that blue rookie uh, on with speed, just within range to get the target lock, and then hiding behind the cloud to keep him safe for this turn. Absolutely. The red one does himself a 4K to set up for a different kind of approach next turn, so does green. Play in. <laughs> He's take I feel like Turk in here. You're taking an awful risk, Vader. <laughs> And green reveals a three bank, unsurprisingly. Takes a focus. Every time I see your focus tokens, I think of the Green Lantern. <laughs> well, I, I am a Green Lantern fan. Uh, and it looks like we do a one bank with that pink. Uh, He's trying to clear the mess out of the way so we can yes. see what's going on, I think. Absolutely. And he rolls for the strain. And safe. Safe. No consequences. Beyond not getting the action. Hmm. That's a hard two. Takes I think him out of the action for this turn, but it leaves him in a good space for next turn where he's not going to get multiple ships blocked by just one. Absolutely. He's definitely opening up that, that channel to sort of swoop around if needed. And Jad they, being... Uh, I think that's why they called them the, the no-consequence obstacles. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Yep. It looks like uh, Scorch is hiding back there, as you would. It does mean Scorch won't be able to do the system phase boost next turn. But it also keeps Scorch very safe this turn. Now let's see what Poe does. He's going for a two straight, tuck him behind yellow. I kind of expect him to let yellow pick up a uh, focus here, but he might go for the HLC if he thinks he has somebody in Bullseye. I think he's got somebody in Bullseye for sure, but... I think that might be obstructed as well. Is it worth it? Yeah, it's an excellent question. And I do think it is slightly iffy. I think his bullseye might possibly go straight down the middle between pink and yellow, which would be so absolutely hilarious if it did. So he's taking that first lock. I would almost expect targeting a synchronizer to be on Poe here, uh, especially with the ion torpedoes. It would It would save him some space there. Yep, and then spends that charge to take a focus for himself. himself a focus. All right. Well, that should bring us to shooting time. Somebody's having fun measuring. There we go. Nothing in bullseye. Holy cow! Oh wow! Good flying, Ryan. Right in the side that pocket. And it looks like he's aiming for... Oh, his wings are closed, so it's not yeah. going to be a very strong attack. Yep. Yep. He's aiming for Omega Squadron 3 in that I would yellow. expect him not to spend anything here. Omega's got three dice and an evade. Yeah, I, I don't think it's likely. Ooh! He, he does spend focus. a focus. And entirely safe. And now and I think Poe has at most one shot coming at him and it's range three through the cloud. I suspect he'll be okay. And Scorch has no targets there, so I think. Yeah. And so now we have that obstructed. Range two, so three dice for the next wing. And two for little Omega right there. Yeah. Hopefully he'll this get is the not a turn. shots. 
This is not a turn when Ryan's really going to expect to do anything significant damage, but next turn, he probably will. Will he spend Scorch's ability? Looks like he leaves it. Ooh. Gets to flip one, so gets nicked. And one moose goes red. And the downside to this is obviously if they walk away with strain, they'll also have to clear that. Obviously, Poe's going to clear that. He spends it hmm. to give a strain. He had a focus to get the second. Oh, well. And he's within range. And to me, that would have been the time to go ahead and spend the focus for the extra chance at a damage because but, yeah, it's three yeah. unmodified dice. But hey. And then that happens. <laughs> <laughs> and then do it. Oh, oh wow. How rude. Perfect evades. I think he, you know, Ryan's thinking defensively here. He wants to be able to engage again because these things can pop pretty quickly. And he's shooting pink. Interesting. That's the one he's got the lock on. He might even go for the torp just to have a chance of doing a better chance of doing some damage. We will have to see how he plays it. Yep, four dice. He's going for the ion torp. A uh, brutal roll with only yeah. one hit. Does he spend it? He is spending. Choose violence. Always. Okay. Enough. Very normal roll for four dice with a target lock. Let's see now what he's, happens. He's got that obstruction. Well, he does one damage. One no damage. Ion, though. No ion. And so completely safe. So obviously at this point, what do you do with that sort of leading yellow X-Wing right there? Is he going to try to pull a block? I think he has to, but he also wants to get... There's only so much he can do in terms of pulling a block. Uh, but he should be able to at least make Ryan, make, uh, Ryan follow like a less optimal route. I would expect Ryan's pink, blue, green to just floor it. Although maybe green doesn't because then he'd hit the kidney up in the corner. Um, but the two in back, yellow and red, yellow's got to turn in pretty hard or turn away. Mm -hmm. That's the other thing there. Eek, they could both just turn away and create a lovely little kill box and try to take out Poe or yellow. I was only getting one action this turn. Exactly. And I think that's the kill box that I would create. Like uh, Poe's in a, in a spot where if he doesn't pull out, he's going to be in a kill box. And so I wonder if, if Jason will actually try to, try to recover this turn, duck away before, before trying to sort of set up any more shots, uh, try to reopen that flank again with Poe. Because he had that flank and then he lost that advantage. The two X-Wings way off in the distance need to turn in. Sadly, they need to turn in gently if they want to have actions. Poe, being stressed, going to have a real hard time getting away from any significant kill box. Especially without uh, without uh, the R4s on board. They have the BB1s. Yeah. And so yeah. they've got those banks to sort of clear things out. But they also can't BB this turn because they're already stressed. Except Yellow, who could? Yellow, who could? And I wonder that could be interesting if he BBs like off to the his right, and then just putters forward a little bit. He could keep yellow, possibly red, from getting actions on their way in, unless of course they turn away and shoot out the rear. It's so fascinating to see how 
how people will use Chad Bean's ability and and when it when it does. I, I think it was interesting that that Ryan decided to keep it for the defensive, the focus token, and just spend it even with one hit. And it looks like we're set. There we go. Bank one for red. Time for an action. Does he dare the lock or just take a focus? He Taking the focus. the focus. Open in the wings. Yep. So green comes in. Oh, and bumps behind him. He's in real good position for next turn, but no action this turn. And what does yellow do? I am very intrigued at this. Does he block? Does he dodge? He opens the he wings. opening the wing. But he could still BB at the start of the move. And he's definitely BBing. All righty. Off to the right. And you called it. We're off to the right right there. Interesting. A little further forward than I expected. And Depends on forward. where he's meaning to block. That's... If yellow only does a two, he's definitely hard to, definitely has him, might even with the three. If red does a three right, bank, completely face plants. And he's going to make uh, Scorch think long and hard about what he's doing. And unsurprisingly, it looks like pink just goes as fast as possible. Oh, minor consequence this time. <laughs> oh no, a strain. On a ship with six health. Eh. I and blue when... does a one forward. Ah. Stays back here to be farther away from the X-Wings in the back while he sets up his own kill box. And it doesn't give that many escape routes for Poe. Nope. Gets and right over with green. Nice fit. That was a, a nifty bit of flying right there. And where does yellow go is the question. Does a hard three bumps. And it does connect. Got that first block. Can he make red hit two? Yes. yes. Oh my. Excellent play with that lead X-Wing. Very nice. And then a three bang to a bump. And also get Scorch. But has Scorch lined up for a shot for because of the block? And he opens his wings. And where does Poe go? Oh, doing. And gets a bump. Hell, that puts him right in the middle of the kill box. And now, it fortunately looks like for him, large portions of that kill box have no actions. But this could be really bad for Poe. And but and also can produce strain for Poe, multiple times, yeah. multiple strains. shooting green who he can lead in uh get into with his other x-wings too still has nobody in his bullseye and just brutal just one and enough it's fine so does scorch lay into the yellow x-wing in his face or does he start straining poe i would start straining poe i think that's the right so choice would I. When he's out of the way, you've got initiative on everything else, and anytime you kill anything, it'll be an initiative kill. And obviously, I think Poe is probably uh, the points bastion here, right? He's he's, he's, oh, yeah. he's he's where all the points are. He's 62, and the other guys are 46 each, so yeah. Spend and he spends a, spends a hit for the strain. Yep. Sets Poe up to get chewed on by the other guys. So many red tokens. And so goes for green first at range two. I like this, using one of the ships that has a modifier to maximize... Didn't need Damn it, but to maximize the potential for the, the strain shot to, to do something. Uh, looks like shields off there. Mm -hmm. And it looks like red is going to try to strain him again. Uh, 
Oh, no. I didn't have anything to spend even. I played against the Jad Bean list the other night, and that was the brutal part about the dice, was that he kept on having nothing to spend. Unfortunately, the dice just wasn't in the player's favor, and that was pretty rough. You're not even asking much of the dice. You're just saying, hey, you know, throw me a single hit. That I can then get rid of. And it looks like he's got that strain again. Blue's firing with the modified shot. He definitely has the plan regarding the strain on his way in. And he spends the focus. This could be fun. Ho only gets one die. And this may cost the crit. Oh, but enough Ah, to block the crit. Just a shield. So... Poe's still above half. Poe comes out of that in half. pretty good shape, honestly. Surprisingly good shape. And we've got that range one shot on Scorch. And a beautiful... Well, that's pretty <laughs> handsome. <laughs> beautiful four hits. Uh... And he has Scorch in one shot. Points are on the board. How many is Scorch here? 35, so 18 points. Not a lot, but it's a start. And he's obviously going for the strange ship. Yep. Right there. 3v1. And at least one will go through. Now, does green actually have him in arc? Yes, he does. He does. So they can gang up and bully pink. Oh. Crit and a hit. And pink comes out of it dinged up, but not terrible. Halved. The SFs are another... free. Oh, he takes the crit too? My bad, I missed that somewhere. Yeah, he takes what the crit too. What was that crit? Uh, that crit was... Console um, fire. Console fire. Alrighty. So pink is down to two. Scorch has three left. Poe has four left. Yellow's only got nicked by one. Early going's very in favor of the X-Wings. And it, they just bring a lot more heat. I think, I think that extra three dice uh, provide more damage. And Ryan's... Obviously, got a uphill <laughs> uphill battle. Not only did he did he decide to show up with Scorch, he showed up with no upgrades. Yeah. So, <laughs> one glance at this list, and I was like, "Wait, what?" And then I started doing the math on how much hull and how much shields, and oh, that that's what. <laughs> but range two, range three combat is not where this list is going to shine. Uh, I really expected it to be more close range this turn. Um, we'll have to see how this pans out, but obviously this coming turn, there's no choice but for it to be closer. And I, I can't imagine what Poe is going to do at this point except get out of dodge. I feel like if Poe just sits behind, even if he gets that double action, he's pretty much doomed for a block at this point unless he pulls out, I assume, right, going to his left, uh, up towards Jason's board. And all that Ryan has to do to stop that is have Blue do a one straight. Exactly. Ryan so, has all, all the blocks waiting to set up for him. And the X-Wings in the back are going to bring a little bit of heat, but not too much. Huh. Maybe he just does a four straight right at the bacon and says, heck, I'm getting out of here. But I have a feeling if he does that, he's going to get shot from a whole bunch of rear arcs. Poe yeah. is in Poe is in a pickle. Yeah, Poe is in a pickle. I think he's in a, a little bit of danger, especially being one away from half, um, uh, potentially straining himself one way or another. Uh, Scorch is also not doing great either. Um, he's currently on a rock, and I uh, currently on that on that pickle right now, will he be able to, no, he won't run over it this turn, but I do believe that he's actually, they're going to just try to focus fire. I love how 
this this block was a beautiful block this turn, followed by another beautiful block mm -hmm. by Ryan to set up Poe for a block. And so it seemed to pay off in Jason's favor this turn. But I think uh no, you're right, absolutely. But this coming turn, things are gonna get pretty rough. If Poe hadn't gotten blocked, I wonder what he would have done. Would he have rolled to set something up to get out of Dodge better next turn? Line up marksmanship or something? Or, you know, hmm. And I catch myself wondering what the, the green and red are going to be doing up top. And it looks like all dials have been relatively set. Looks like we're set. I am honestly expecting at least some bombs. In a, in a list like this, if every list we know is going to have some kind of swarm element to it, mm -hmm. uh, I'd imagine some bombs in the coming weeks that we're going to see. One of the lists I came up with was uh, three bombing strikers, all with disciplined, led by Soon Tierfell with disciplined and <laughs> toys. So, yeah, go right ahead, kill Soon Tier first. Everybody else gets to have fun with you. And if not, hey, bombs, and it's just. It's fragile as heck, but the firepower is pretty extreme. Absolutely. And it's squirrely. Um, I came up with a list that I'm probably not going to run this this uh, tournament, which was uh, Rose Tico with C-3PO, uh, Ferrisphere Paint and Stealth Device, and Heroic, <laughs> and then five, five Colossus Mechanics with Proton Rockets. Oh my gosh. And so it was just, I actually played Alex against it as a warm up. And I thought maybe this was too mean to play that, because, that. because I just kept Rose back the entire time. Of course. You um, absolutely. You and don't care about her offense again. at all in that list. <laughs> I'm sorry, Alex. You we practiced it again. It was so good. <laughs> it was so good. I had so many proton rocket shots. That were like there were no re rolls, of course, right? Right, but who cares? Because I'm rolling five dice, and then and you're rolling them over and over again, over and over again, and I have hull to take. So, uh, looks like yeah, we've got a three talon from that yep, X talon roll, and he went forward, get a little closer to the action. Uh, green just came in and focused up, not green, red. Sorry. Green is apparently going to BB-8, judging by the bing I just heard. So is he, or is he just moving? Oh, no, he's he definitely bb -ing. He's giving him some safe space. Backing up so he has some room around the kidney. Now, does he take a lock to get that torp on someone, or just focus to shoot whoever? I think you have to sort of take that torp just to sort of incapacitate Scorch this turn. I'm not sure he's got range on Scorch. Uh, yet. That's he true will enough. in a he moment. Will. Alrighty. I don't blame him at all for the focus because Lord only knows who he'll be shooting at. Clears up the crit off of pink, so no more console fire. And it looks like green goes a one forward. Beautiful slide in. You know, we missed something. When Red came in, I saw him take the target lock on Scorch, and then he had a focus, and I was like, wait, what? Poe spent his charges to grant him the second uh, uh, action. So he's got a fully that... modified Torp on mm. to Scorch. I still got some halt to cut through. I think Red is still completely untouched at this point. Where is Poe going? I have no idea. I could imagine. I, I, I hope he pulls a three bank to the left and then if he pulls barrels. a one bank to his right, I think he'd hit yellow and wouldn't be in green's arc and he might not even be in blue's arc and all of a sudden he's in an okay space. I don't know. I am quite intrigued. Obviously, Jason's play is to take Scorch off the board this turn. He's got yeah. yellow in the right in the back pocket right there. And here comes Poe. What's he got? He's got a three talon. Oh goodness. Does does he make That's it? That's aggressive. 
Yes, he does. That's showing up blue. He makes that. Wow. <laughs> wow. Apparently, he decided if I'm going to hit flying. something, then who cares? And if I don't hit, then I'm set for the future. Huh. Uh, but he is he is right at range one of a lot of people. But he also got out of blue, red, and green's arcs in the process. Huh. But range one wow. at Scorch with a focus. And range one of yellow with a focus. And probably two of pink but yeah definitely two of pink <laughs> hopefully hopefully he can put some damage into pink or does he go for yellow and try to remove that focus especially when his yellow isn't going to be able to shoot pink oh poe has a lock on yellow I did not realize. Absolutely, he shoots there. And two hits with the rerolls, and he's going to spend it. Yep. Always choose violence. Pose it in, yeah, and pose it oh. enough danger that there's no point in holding on to it for the future. There may not be a future. Didn't work, but... And one evade. He gets to keep his focus. That could almost not possibly have gone worse for Poe. Yeah, oh. I, I think, I think Poe needed to take out at least half on shields of yellow. And Only it looks normal like... set of rolls. He does one or two damage and yellow spends the focus. And Poe is much happier with that than he spends his target lock does one damage, and yellow still keeps his focus? Oh. Is there a debate here? And it looks like we're going to decide what we're going to do with those dice. Three. Is that shot into Poe? Oh, beautiful. I Three don't hits. think you spend any of those for a strain. <laughs> nope. <laughs> And it looks like oh, that's bad. he's got nothing, and he is down to one. That is bad for Poe. Yep, thirty-one even, points. Yeah, thirty-one points, and only and, one health left. And only one health left, and here it comes. Range one, yellow, and obviously spends, spends the that focus. Poe. And this Two is not easy. Oh, it's not easy, and that's it for Poe. Can Jason get some revenge and maybe take out Scorch? We saw on the way in how two die attacks can leave you really wanting, but we're seeing here how masked two die attacks can be incredibly effective once you get in close. I mean, that's the, that's the, that's the trick, right? That was the beauty of the A-wing swarms, where once you get in close with those A-wings and those turret arcs, it's kind of kind of got the same effect here. And one crit. And one safe. evade, so he's safe. Apparently Poe taught his wingmates how to uh, roll evade dice, but didn't bother to go to the lessons himself. Well, he's a hotshot ace. He's a little bit reckless. He, he, uh. doesn't, he doesn't really care about dodging. And it looks like we're going after red again, obviously. Hopefully. And nothing. We've got two more shots to go. At range one with three dice with blue. And... And the focus go for two. two. And oh, nice. Yeah, very nice. Blue Squadron Pilot Red is the hero of the day. He's the MVP. Range three. This will be two dice on three. It's about 50-50 to do damage. Ever so slightly in favor of taking one. He spends that focus. Mm -hmm. Does two. That's and pretty healthy. This one's already damaged too. So it takes down the remainder of the shields on yellow. 
All right, time for some revenge. What can you get done? Well, Scorch has still got that focus right there. Yep. He's really only got one realistic option here. Shoot yellow. Ozzy could shoot green, but yellow's already necked, so. It looks like it's a 3v2 shot. And yeah, that's unfortunate. It looks like uh, this round went exceedingly well for Ryan. With only two shots left to go. Yep, and now Jason, next turn, has limited options of even how to move. BB will help in that regard. But the red is stressed, so that, does red even have any mm. BBs? He's still got one BB left, but red is stressed right there. So obviously he might get trapped here. And it looks like somebody took some damage. Green got halved. Mm hmm Green got halved. So there's a chance of taking him out here. It'll take slightly above average results for him to do it, but he could. And that would open up the board for his movement quite a bit. And oh, that is a oh, beautiful oh, shot. Oh, my. <laughs> and Boom. say goodbye. He just two-shot a fully healthy SF. With nothing but foci. This is that moment that you wish you had disciplined, right? Mm. Swarm like this. Cutthroat, get a charge or two back here and there somewhere. Yeah. Although disciplined, yeah. Everybody target locks. <laughs> Everybody target locks. That would be incredible. I'm glad they raised that in price because I, I love I love that card. Um, but it I, is. It I is played it and abused it at a GSP event, and I absolutely said it needed to go up to two points. <laughs> I think the only reason Cutthroat went up is because of Transponders. But Transponders also went up. And Jabba, who was abusing all of it, went through the roof. I'm not sure that they needed to do all of that. Yeah, I think they I think they overcorrected. But that, that that's actually that's actually responsive to the meta and allowing yep. allowing the meta to evolve with the new ships that are releasing because there is already a jam meta. And so imagine tagging Jabba onto that, adding that into the mix. Um, yeah, I was actually I'm, saddest I, about Protectorate Club being being raised up because that that stress pass with at two points was just lovely. Why was he binging on the stresses? Just to point out that they are there. I hmm. think think perhaps uh, yes, just to remind everybody that there are stresses there. And so they Red's going to have a hard time mattering this turn for anything other than I'm in the way from where you might want to be. And maybe maybe set up some blocks so that at least deprives some actions. Um, I, man, maybe I mean I would I would peace out with Scorch just because you want to protect Scorch at this point because obviously he's got the advantage here. Yep. Just keep Scorch around to help the other guy's offense and don't worry about Scorch's shot itself. Mm -hmm. uh, the others, uh, pink probably just a one forward, but red, I would probably do a five straight and just get out or do a hard turn to the right. And with yellow, a hard turn to the left. And just create yourself a lovely little box where wherever red goes, there's really no place he can go to get out of that box. But he's also fully healthy. He's not even the ship you want to go after at the moment. It's yellow. Huh. It's a, it's an interesting sort of priority order right here. Uh, I'm not I'm not confident what you do with red right there. I'm thinking a bank one to the right focus and just sit there. Uh, if yellow does what I'm talking about, he might be an arc and have to consider what to do. Um, and put you in a position where you can talon wherever you need to or hard turn or something the following turn, provided you survive. And you might pull a block on somebody if he slow rolls on anyone. It also gets you out of the way so the green can do almost certainly the same thing. 
and it looks like we're changing our dials a little bit. It's always better when you second guess yourself. <laughs> that has never worked out for me. Every time I've played in a in a in a game, especially in person, I think online it's a little bit different because you have a little bit like I think I think my perception is a little bit more warped now that I've gotten used to it over the past two years. But I feel like any time I've played in person and changed my dial maneuver, I immediately regret it. Like I re reveal it, and I'm like, oh yeah, my original move was significantly better. If I have a major epiphany about an action or a board state or something that I wasn't considering with my first moves, okay, fine. But yeah. otherwise, yeah, in general, I mean, due consideration, yes. But everything set, ready to go, second guess yourself. Ugh, that just feels bad. Absolutely. So my, my, my day job outside of this is I teach uh, test prep. And so that's something that I tell my students is that if you're making an informed decision, don't change your answer. If you're making an informed decision, if you're aware of all the sort of game state at play, what you don't want to do is change your decision or change your answer, because chances are you're likely going to change it to the wrong answer. And I think that absolutely applies here to X-Wing. I think you're right. I think that's an excellent bit of test prep too. I'm one of those annoying people who was just always naturally really good at taking tests. Um, and when I became a teacher and we started studying how to do this stuff, I went, wait, you have to tell people these things? I've been doing that since fifth grade. I, really? Oh, so I teach my students the techniques that I used to use. Um, and that actually was not one of them. I wasn't applying game theory to it. And that's actually a, a really good point. I, uh, I, was a, I was that terrible student that never did his homework, but then showed up for tests and did okay. And so I would get in trouble with my teachers because they're like, y you know, you're not getting an A because you didn't do your homework. And I was like, yeah, but I just don't care. So I was a great student is what I'm saying. <laughs> and it looks like, obviously, uh, it looks like uh, the X-Wing banked. Uh, yep. He banked one, in right? with a one. Yeah. Now, who's he going to lock? He's going for red. All righty. Pretty good bet he should have red in his sights. Red is fully healthy, though. Hmm. If I was going to lock there, I probably would have locked Scorch. Ah, expect a barrel roll. He has closed the wing. Roll off to the right and try to get blocks, I would guess. There's that focus. Link it to... Link it to the roll. And yeah, he's very much going for blocks here. That's a smart move. And if it works, he has set green up very nicely to take advantage. Uh, let's see how Ryan counters this. Because he, he obviously to lock. And get ready for the thing. All righty. And it looks like we've got Scorch locked. All right. Now time to see what the SFs pull off. So Pink does a slight one forward. Clearly takes the focus. Probably see a, a three sloop from him next turn. A three bank. And he barrels right out. Way to squeeze out of there. Red. Blue, Blue hits. But still has get a nice shot, shot on red. red. He does block red. Okay. And Scorch. Well, Scorch is not going to be entirely thrilled about that. I, th I imagine there'd be some kind of...
maybe I kind of think he just sits there, takes a focus, and hopes that his boys can uh, mow down red. Well, if he he's also in in Hard. right, he's an arc of yellow too back there. Yeah, and so I feel like maybe getting out of arc for one of them might be a smart move and getting some distance. I mean, no mods, and then you can't really help out your fellow friends. Hmm. But right now he's not in Red's bullseye, so that's only a three die attack, not four. And if he boosts, he'll be in bullseye. But, but if he would barrels, it be at range one or range two. So yeah. he could also barrel, could he not? Could he make that barrel? I doubt it. In 1.0, sure. I don't think he makes it in 2.0. Not quite a shot. All right, here he goes. Not quite a shot. All right, here he goes. And out the rear, red oh, has nothing. No shot at all. That means blue's not going to have anything. Either. Well, no, blue has the one out the front. Duh. Yeah. Out of range okay. one. Beautiful well. shot. <laughs> Two hits and a crit. Something is going through. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Red will take that exchange any day. Okay. Exactly. Sure. Any day. That could have been all of his shields. Got a yellow range one shot. Mm -hmm. And he's. I wonder if he's going to spend that in order to. Strain him up. Uh, is it in range? It is in range. It's inside the bubble. Yep. So strain. And then pink. Just outside of range one. So this will be 2v1. And a beautiful okay. hit crit again. And one of eight. <laughs> so Red beautiful three guys. Beast yeah. on the de defense on, here. The beast on defense. He's he's survived several turns. Yowza. Okay. And it looks like starting with red because red's only got one choice, so makes sense. And Scorch has three hull left. And red has him locked. So, and, and that's, a brutal oh, first got focus. Oh, well, let's spend that lock. Let's see what happens. Mm -hmm. He'll need There's to see some paint. Shot. Bends the focus, gets three. So, Scorch needs paint. And gets one paint for two hits and is alive. But green's right there for the follow-up. And green also has a lock. Wonder if he's going to go for the torp. Nope, just going for the primary. Finds the lock to guarantee. And it's yep, there a it done deal. And it looks like Scorch is down. Both squad leaders have been taken out. And this means that yellow can light up red and maybe spend his torp there. And Alex, do you have a point breakdown for us? How are we doing so far? Right now, um, actually, I'm just totaling up the last of the shields there. And we should have your breakdown at Jason currently leading at 85 to 62. Yes. And just so you know, uh, Scorch pulled the direct hit there before. Ready. Right. Spends the crit. And that crit spends the lock. And just two. Yep. Oof. But they both go through. Alrighty. That was, that this was... has been very swingy. Round after round, it goes from one advantage to the other. Now it's it's back in Jason's favor. 
his only issue being that Red doesn't really have a realistic way to do anything significant next turn. Although he could do a hard two and still manage to pull off a an unmodified shot, probably. Or a talon and do an unmodified it's stress he's shot. Stressed, so he can't. Oh, he's stressed. I, I didn't even see that hiding stress back there. Yeah. Green and yellow are in great spots to do whatever the heck they want, but yeah. Gotta say, I'm enjoying that it's a uh, resistance versus four, four, uh, first order thematic. Yes. For tonight. It's an incredibly thematic. I was I was actually thrilled when uh, Jason sent me his list that it was a resistance list. Oop. Are you guys there? Yeah. Looks like we failed out. I failed out. Oh. Oh. I don't know. We're all still here. The stream's yep. still up, so. Okay, well. Uh, you guys, I'll... I'll... <laughs> It's just me. I, I guess I'll have to come back in a second. So, hey, Joel, Josh, yeah, <laughs> uh, I was going to say, uh, since I'm planning to do multi-faction, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, if you want to go thematic, if you just tell me right before we do our game, uh, which faction you're doing, I'll just run the naturally opposed faction, whatever it is I have for it. <laughs> Uh, certainly, I will tell you which faction I'm running. I, I plan on running the figurehead list. Uh, so my 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 list this week will be a scum list. Well, darn it, scum doesn't really have a natural enemy. Exactly, which is <laughs> so why I can play anything I want and be perfectly fine. Okay, all right. I may just randomly roll it. <laughs> <laughs> randomly roll it. Uh, I have a scum list. I've been working on it uh, for quite a while. I'm pretty happy with it. I was able to pull the same swarm for every single list that I have for this tournament, uh, but with different squad leaders. Okay. So. My uh, my 2.0 comfort list is five Karak's fighters with Predator. If I have no idea what else to fly, I'll just put that on the table. It has, there is nothing that hard counters it. There are some things that it will hard counter. Um. It's not the greatest thing since sliced bread by any stretch. It's, but it's, it's very meat and potatoes. It's very simple, but I fly it really, really crazy, and I have a lot of fun doing it. Yeah, my comfort list was the Colossus mechanics. I just love them uh, as ships. Um, I also love like the V19s, and that was my other idea was to fly with them. Um, I tried to build lists around Oddball as a squad leader in the V19. Mm. Uh, with thread tracers and synchronized console ah, and okay. uh and uh debris gambit so he could turn it red and then turn it white and then get a lock <laughs> depending on which way it works it, exactly. whatever works better for him at the moment nice uh but i love that oddball but then i, I couldn't find enough interesting combinations to last all six weeks gotcha so uh, Rose Tico was actually my favorite because I was able to build so many lists, but they felt so similar. And so the challenge that I made for myself was that I was going to build lists that didn't have any overlaps in terms of their upgrades besides the swarm. Oh, so wow! So there's zero overlaps between any of the the scum pilots that I'm having, or uh, they're all different. They're all yep. different upgrades. And they fly differently. Ah, they've started moving. We should probably stop kibitzing about our future possible game and talk about the one on the screen. So <laughs> Red worry, has done Joel. himself a bank out of there to focus up. Green has done a 4K to turn back towards the box. <laughs> Joel, just tell me what you're flying. It's fine. I'm, I'm not. I swear I won't change my list. I don't even know yet. Like I said, I'm just going to roll. <laughs> I was going to say that um, when you're talking gum swarm it kind of makes me assume you're flying m3as and if you're changing that loadout every time okay so one time you do all auto blasters one time you do all heavy laser cannons oh, no, one no. time you do all ion cannons wait how many different things can you do and make it make sense oh yeah i'm changing the loadout for the squad leader i'm not changing the loadout for the swarm my swarm is identical ah, okay. every single time so so yeah so the squad leader will be just no duplicate cards of any sort ever, but the squad itself just sits. Okay, exactly. And so the squad itself itself, and that 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 was kind of my excitement for me 
was just like seeing how you could build a squad leader and create different lists as a result. And it looks like we're just slowly okay. inching away with a bunch of ones. So focuses. Yeah, he just kept the box alive for the turn instead of uh, slooping at the moment. Oh, hello. We're we're gonna light up red. Oh, and get out of green's arc. So green and yellow both have to shoot blue. Blue, who is previously untouched, so he's gonna be pretty pretty okay with that. One of the that, that that's an excellent bit of swarm flying it's like yes i know you're going to get shots but i'm going to make you shoot the things you don't want to so that my ships can stay on the board and it looks like Pink he's debating yellow. interesting yeah i mean obviously yellow is the most damaged at this point uh he's gotten he doesn't have half on any of the the x-wings here Yellow also does not have a defensive token, whereas red does. And it's two hits. It's in his favor. And oh man, that's just brutal. Oh jeez. And it looks like yellow goes down to half, swinging again. Yep. So two in Ryan's left favor over here. Blue now. I would assume. Yep. Same target. Trying to finish it off. Ooh, definitely got yep. that too. And, and does it? That'll does take it. yellow out. And yellow doesn't even get a return shot. Initiative nope. killed. Yeah. One of the things I've got built is Temin with uh, three red squadrons. And then I also did Temin with three black squadrons. They just don't have the toys. Um, There's something precisely... beautiful about the black squadrons, like uh, having the same initiative. Yes. They are three points more than the one initiative lower, so you got to really want that one initiative. Mm -hmm. But with Temin out there as the squad leader and all of them flying at I-4... Man, it is so nice when everybody flies at the same. You can make the puzzle pieces fit any way How you much want better. to. Yeah. Oh. That's a Two nice crits. shot for unmodified. And, and to evade. Holy cow. <laughs> and here this we go again. Come down to the fact that red cannot be hurt. I just don't think Jason has enough time left to do enough in return. And lives. We'll have to see. Wow. And that's so what everything. does Green do with his shot? Well, the only thing. Oh, well, there's only one choice. So <laughs> I, that's pretty obvious then. And blue is untouched. So, yeah. Unless he has him on this one shot, which isn't happening. It's not really going to make a difference. Oh, uh, just enough. What do you know? I'd say he scratched the paint, but all he really did was get to the top layer of the clear coat. I think I think the green is just in a, a bit of a bind here because he's he's forced to do a blue, and he could oh. always just do a hard two to the left anyway. But if I'm Ryan, all of those ships are probably just doing straight ones so that they can take out green next turn. Yeah, red's probably swooping around, so you might want to predict where that that's headed because green is untouched right now. And red, while red is down to health, it's been like, what, eight shots or something silly to make that happen? <laughs> so maybe you push your luck and stick red right in the middle of him just for funsies. I always like to the think, right with red. I always think it's the I-1 that's like the MVP. There, for some reason, there's always some I-1 that's just like scoring all the shots, taking no damage, doing all the work. Um, I like to think it's yeah. uh, whenever I play with AP5. AP5 just somehow oh. does all the work in the list. He is so good at helping others do the work. He's the prep cook in the back that it makes it possible for the guy you see up on the line to actually put the good meal together. Maybe my dice are doomed, but uh, yeah. that's that's usually like I find like, I was like, I'll roll with AP5 naturally. He's like, oh, yeah, all crits. Here you go. <laughs> 
When so, I fly AP5, he so often doesn't even have shots. I just don't even worry about it. He's there to make somebody else's life a whole lot more pleasant. Absolutely. Somebody who, who uh, like a Braylon, someone yeah. who wants to be stressed. Or just someone who really needs to have an action and has a hard time not being stressed, like a ghost. Mm -hmm. It's a pity the damage deck is so brutal to ghosts. I zero die. I mean, and what is it? 13 hull to start? Uh, 10. 10. More shields, 10 hull. And the shields disappear so fast. None of the ways that they have of mitigating crits are enough to to actually make it matter. Although, uh, the novice, whatever it is, whose name I can't remember right now, uh, I think just came down to two points instead of four, so maybe it becomes worth ex uh, exploring again. And it looks like we're ready to go. We open the wings. I'd assume we'd see some kind of K here or turn. I'm, I'm, Ooh, green going first. Green just running away. Did he? Huh. Did huh. he set the maneuver on the wrong ship? I wonder if he did. Yep. And it looks like Ryan is loud. Those, him the dials do. aren't, yeah, with, way to fly casual. Well done. The dials aren't colored to match the ships, so that becomes a whole lot easier. And so it looks like, yeah, the dials got mixed yep, they're up. They're drawn lines to us to show us which ship goes to which dial. And Okay. Yeah. And so they've they've altered it. And so that makes a lot more sense. A hard three that right here. That makes a whole lot more sense. <laughs> It'd be interesting if he boosted because he it would block any kind of maneuvering right here. Or fancy maneuvers. But he's just going to lock. Who is he going to lock? Well, pink is the one he's got messed up. And pink is the one, if he does anything other than turn right and barrel roll right, that he's going to be able to light up. So that makes a whole lot more sense. Okay. Yes. <laughs> We were talking in the beginning about uh, list building pitfalls, and I think we see one in this list. The the three ships with ion torps, he's fired a grand total of one of them, even though he's had locks, because there are so yeah. many ships on the other side that ionizing one of them really isn't a big deal. I was really surprised not to see, see targeting synchronizer, especially with a drop in points. It's become so efficient just to sort of line that up, especially if you do have things that require locks. Because even rolling four dice, even if it's unmodified, is still better on the off chance that you do maybe one damage and then a rest mm -hmm. of ion tokens. I think it's a uh, like for me when if I if I were building uh, a secondary missile list, uh, at least in this tournament, I would definitely tag on targeting synchronizer to everything. If you took HLC off of Poe, put targeting synchronizer on there, I think he'd have one point left to play with and probably just end up eating it uh but it would make it a lot easier to get those attacks off i think he would get two right because hlc is five now and then it's four it used to be five oh, it's four okay yeah you get get one maybe drop a heroic on there instead uh well heroic is two now so two yeah but bring marksman's ship up to two. Oh, fair point oh. fair point so yes absolutely with how many ships that we're going to be facing in this kind of tournament? I was thinking uh, going with Saturation Salvo and like Cluster Missiles. That's such a gorgeous combo. Nice. Absolutely. Right? And uh, if you tag on, uh, uh, if you can find a way to build a list with 
uh, targeting synchronizer. That's even better. There you go. Um, another fun one is saturation salvo with barrage rockets. Stick uh, that on a gamma. Bam that. It's a lot of offense. I do feel like we're going to see a lot more of saturation salvo now that it dropped. What was it? Three points? It cut it in half from what it used to be? Something like that. I think it's three now, and it was either five or six before. Yeah, it was but five yeah, or it six came down before. significantly. Oof. Brutal. Nice little whiff there. A good round for the X Wings. Again, trading. Just one. And I miss Jad Bean now. Red's going to roll the evade. You just know. Yep, there <laughs> it is. <laughs> that red is just it's super dirty. tanky. Uh, and now he's got uh, a range wow. one target lock shot on pink. So. Pink only has two health left. He could take this out of Pink's hand just by rolling well. A very normal start. How much are each of those Omega Squadron experts worth right now? Uh, I have that up over... Oh, I had that up. I moved away. Silly me. 33. Yeah. 33. And he just killed one. And the, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. Now that one was already halved, but that means 33. 60. He's got 99 points left on the board versus two X Wings at two for the X Wings. But the X Wings still have another shot. Huh. He's putting four dice into red. Oh, oh that probably and that's isn't going to do anything. I want to make a smarmy comment about that's why you should take the focus, but it wouldn't have mattered because he didn't roll any foci. So, <laughs> yeah. He was doubling down on making sure he killed pink wherever it went, and it worked. So now that we're in endgame, obviously, where do you think, like, I think, I think Ryan's just got to protect his points because he's up as I think he's up like 108 to 101. Mm -hmm. You are um, all righty. And red and blue are pointing different ways. They're limiting what green can do, but not too much. Huh. He and they really, have the time to react. Yeah. They have time if to I were react. him, I'd feel a whole lot more comfortable if I halved one more ship. And you have to try that on red. But at this point, if you feel that red is invincible, I can't say that you're wrong. <laughs> I don't think. Meanwhile, don't think, the X Wings don't really <laughs> care who they go after. Yeah, and they don't really have a shot this turn. I don't think, unless they K or Talon at some point. Where the are reds, they going to? Maybe the red turns right, and then yeah, red X Wing should be turning right because red uh, Omega Squadron is the closest to being halved, and he's going away in that direction. Um, but for green. What is does Greenhead left to shoot somebody who goes that way, or does he also turn right in an effort to block red and or set him up for nastiness? I would set up a block for red. Obviously, you're going to get some shots coming behind you, but they've got enough hull to sort of survive that. And, and we've seen what red does with his green dice, so it may not even matter. There may not be enough firepower on the board to get through him anymore. I realize that, you know, mathematically what he rolled before me has nothing to do with what he rolls next, but thematically it feels like there aren't enough guns on the board to actually hurt red anymore. Well, if he can focus fire, that'd be one thing. I think, you know, six, six die against two should have some impact theoretically. Ooh, green pulls. So he came one. left with green. So, so that's, that's a block for blue. Maybe. Especially if red fits over there also. Because they're going to lock yellow in this case. And does red do a hard three to the right? Or does he do a two and maybe bump? Or R3. he does a three and fits? That looks, like, that looks like he's been practicing that forever. They're lined up perfectly. <laughs> they are lined up 
yeah, really well. Yep. Um, and he only needs one damage on red to have him and get back in the points lead. So it might be an occasion where it's worth it to fire off the uh, torp. And right. set up uh, possibly a kill the next turn. Mm -hmm. And it looks like that's all of the X-Wings. Where is Ryan going to go? Hard three with his blue. Oh. Up. Oh. Beautiful. Uh, I wonder if they're going to walk that back because it was a mistake and he meant to go the other direction. Because otherwise he's flying off the board next turn. Yeah. Yes. Looks with like a healthy ship. Looks like it. <laughs> yep. Yep. Okay. It's even more beautiful. Right, gentlemanly game. Yep. Last turn we had it happen for the other player. This turn we have it happen for Ryan. So fly casual, everyone. Be kind. Is this the he same was going issue? the other way too. Yep. <laughs> Where have we seen this movie before? Now, if he barrel rolls, does he get out of arc? He might. And he's he going for into, it. Uh, he's going into arc, at least, too. Yeah. Comes closer with yellow. All right. He's going after red. Let's see if red can survive. I might be tempted to shoot green instead just because I know it's not the right play, but still. Unmodded green dice. All right. 2v2. And beautiful well, two hey, hits. hey, that's the start. And, and unlike like his friend, Rez. Green is not an ace defender. Is it green? No, we're, yes, we're shooting yep. green. Mm -hmm. And it looks like we're focused firing on green. Oh, oh boy. Oh, beautiful two. And one doesn't quite have him. But just so needs one, one more to get green. half. And it looks like we're going definitely for range one. And so you're saying there's a chance. There's a chance. Oh, he almost saved and that. a crit to, to boot. And that's a blinded pilot. You is it a blinded pilot? He can it fire the torp, but it might just because it's the best way you're gonna get any kind of results this turn. And that looks Shooting like we're the primary. The primary. Is it worth it to shoot the ions? I think he's yeah. deciding to shoot the ions. Yeah. Yep. Significantly better chance of actually getting one through, and you might even manage to ionize him. That's, oh, that's, that's nice. That's definitely getting through. There's damage. And, and there's Ion. There's Ion. So. Which isn't the worst shot for yellow because no. at worst he rolls forward, takes that takes focus. focus and calls it a day. Red does have the shot. And. Ooh, that was close. If only Looks just. like. Yep. It's only just and. Looks like we're throwing an ion. Spend that lock. Obviously. And two hits. Real and a good crit. chance. It's gonna get the half. Of course, he needs more than that now. And oh no, no ions. ions. So he got the half, but he also lost half on a more expensive ship. So the lead actually got bigger for, for Ryan just then. And this is the final round with 45 yep. seconds left to go. This has been a giant swing back and forth. 
it looks like the X-Wings still have a chance. They're going to need a bit of luck, but they absolutely still have a chance. It could also end up with a... Go ahead. Go ahead. You were to say a stalemate? Uh, No, no. It could absolutely end up like a 60-point victory for Ryan if the dice go in his favor instead. Uh Uh-huh. He's super close to having red. He could kill green. He could do both of those this turn without stepping outside, you know, fairly normal probabilities. On the other hand, (laughs) it could completely go the other way around. So very interesting. There is time. Looks like dials are being set. We've got one more dial to go. Uh, And two dials on Ryan's part. So where do you think, uh, where do you think this will fall out? Let's 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 take our bets right now. I mean, who's got the advantage in terms of shots? I feel like the X wings do. This turn, although there is that planned and pilot issue. I think, yeah, I think I'm he still has a target lock. So if he fixes it, it helps. Yeah. You were saying, Alex? I'm thinking X-wings only because that blue tie is in a position where he's gonna where he's gonna be really hard to line up a really good shot. I think unless he just goes straight out. But... I think the blue tie just is a bank one to the right, and he's gonna be able to shoot uh, out his backside just fine. Or he'll, he'll probably I mean, shoot bank red. one to the left. My bad, wrong way. I was but say, yeah, well, red, either direction. Right, yeah, yeah. If he goes right, he's gonna hit red. I doubt he'd get green but green's the one that has the most damage on it plus that blinded pilot yeah so if he does a bank one left with blue yellow floats straight red probably does a hard three to the left and just comes in behind green all three of those guns are on green one or two of them are probably range one and he's got a real good chance to take green out and if he does that it's just 100 percent over but if he doesn't then green Halves yellow almost for sure. And the question it then becomes, can red do enough to somebody else to matter? And so he clearly fixes that blinded pilot. Yep, so he can use that target lock. And does he talent or something else? He does talent. He does talent. So he'll be able to focus fire at least a little bit. You guys remember when Bodie McBoatface when Bodie McBoatface was the new meme years ago? I can't remember that. I don't know. Uh, it was a, a research vessel vessel out of Britain, and they were uh, oh, yes. crowdsourcing the name for it, and Boating yes, Boat Face Boat Face one. one. Yes. Every time a ship gets ionized and starts floating yes. away like that, in my head, I think Floaty McFloat Face. Floaty McFloat Face, yeah, absolutely. Floaty McFloat Face. And looks like we've got Blue doing a little one bank. Right there, trying to trap red. Be able to shoot at red, but green doesn't have to worry about it. Ooh. And I think red I'm, doesn't have anything and may need to barrel roll. Barrel. I think he'll have to barrel roll in yep. to connect that shot. Because but they're he could, slightly akimbo from each other, he might even be able to get that shot without having to worry about getting shot back. And since red is already halved, well... Points-wise, that's actually the last thing he would want to shoot right now is red. The last thing Jason would want to shoot is Ryan's red. Mm -hmm. Ryan's red. So what is he going to do? You can see him arguing in his head about the math. The back of my head, I'm like, the time is clicking, the time is... Oh, wait, the time is over. You can take all the time you want to think about this one. Okay. 
And he's definitely taking that barrel for the range one shot. Alrighty. Because he could initiative kill red. Well, maybe not. At least get him to half. And this is what we're talking about. If he if he gets him to half, it'll be surprising. And, and the important part here is that is that Ryan, if he pulls this win out, will win the Jad Bean poker tokens that he's such that a big is of fan course of. course, the important thing. Yes. Yeah. Um, one evade. Perfect. One evade. Perfect. <laughs> oh no. Uh, and range, range two. two, two dice. He has to do two damage with two dice against two in order to have red. There we go. Oh, he There's started two. Oh, <laughs> that is so good. Red, this is so good. It's so oh my tense. gosh. Oh, let's see what what yellow can pull out. I don't think much at this point. Can he? I, don't I think mean, there's any I, point in shooting green. You have I think to do the three damage Mary. with two dice. Yeah, I think, I think you the shoot Hail red. Mary. I think and you go for red. one damage. Now you need two there also, huh? Two there. Go for. Oh. You don't have hope for the hope for the crit. Maybe get a double hit. Yeah. Or blind them again. Yeah. There's oh, the crit. Got a crit. But he's safe. Nice. Oh my. The two die guns coming back to bite this him. This could be really, really tight. What is the score right now? <laughs> uh, score is 118 to 131. In who's so favor? So if he has the ship, he uh, wins. In Ryan's favor. Holy cow. This is okay. literally coming down to the last shots. That's four dice. Oh, he's he doing need, he that. only needs to do one to have him. Yeah, he he's, doing one the torp. He's, he's doing the torp. Makes sense. Oh, send it. Oh, oh, oh two. <laughs> spend the lock. Let's spend he the lock. One more, and he wins this game. Torp. Do it. Oh, do that's it. so brutal. Oh no. no. Oh no. Oh. It's actually but he can still it could still happen. Um this is so tight. Paint. He needs double he paint. Needs paint. He needs oh paint. Oh my gosh. He needs so much paint. No. Oh, no. oh. God. I feel so much pain for Ryan. Right that was so <laughs> close. I've literally got goosebumps. Oh yeah. my gosh. I have goosebumps. Oh wow. Jad Bean. It was a really well flown Jad Bean. I feel like losing Scorch that turn definitely Good definitely grief. changed the shape of the game. Oh, just one. I would have taken the evade. He doesn't take anything. Yeah, he doesn't take it. So it's what, like 133 to 131? 135. Oh, no. Wow. This was such an amazing game. Oh, um, so good. Yeah. <laughs> I'm. It's amazing how quickly things turn from turn to turn. Um, thank you, Joel, for joining us. I would really You're appreciate you thank taking you. your time. Yeah. Thank you for uh, having me. This was a whale of a game, and you guys are are awesome to commentate with. <laughs> Absolutely, we're we're so glad to have you on. Um, if you have any advice for somebody who has to play you this week, what would that be? <laughs> I'm just just throwing that out there. I don't know why. Uh, it would be fly something that you're very comfortable with, because if you're flying something you're not, it's going to be a bad day. And that's always fly what you know, guys. Yep. Uh, uh, thanks, Joel, for joining us. We'll probably see you on the stream table at some point again. Uh, thank you, Alex, for obviously setting this all up and oh, uh, being our streaming data guy. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's a technical term, streaming data guy. Streaming data uh, guy. I'm Josh yep. Chu. I'm Hoth Trooper. Thanks for joining us tonight. And... Have a good night. This is 207th Squadron signing off. Have a good night, folks. Ciao.